Welcome to the third and final instalment of my Camtasia videos on how to configure the GBA appliance, the Ultimate Deployment Appliance. In the previous two videos we've had a look at how to set up the GBA appliance, changing its IP address, uh, changing the DHCP service to service that subnet, and also how to increase, uh, or rather how to initialize the second disk and set its size. Uh, now what we're going to look at doing is uploading an ISO file to the UDA's uh, second disk and then configuring a, a deployment of, in this case, Windows XP. So what you need to do is get yourself a copy of WinSCP, which is an open source product, so freely available for download from uh, SourceForge. <coughs> uh, connect to your UDA appliance in the IP address for the host, the username root, and the default password for the root is the test. You should log in. Uh, you may get a uh, certificate warning. Uh, I've already logged in, so I won't get that warning. You need to identify the ISO that you want to upload. Now that needs to be uploaded to var public SMB mount and then typically disk 2 uh, and it must go in the root of that disk. You could alternatively upload it to disk 1 if you've not initialized disk 2 um, but that only gives you about uh, 300 megabytes, 300-400 megabytes, uh, which is typically not enough for a guest OS deployment. So, um, you then click on the file and press F5 to copy it up. I have already uploaded the file uh, purely because that takes a while. Um, so, that's all we need WinSCP for. Having uh, uploaded the file, you can then point your browser to the UDA appliance. Log into the web interface, the default account and password are both admin. What you'll then need to do is go and configure the OS. Okay, now as I said I've uh, uploaded XP, so I'm going to configure XP. Specify the disk you've uploaded the ISO to and it should hopefully identify the ISO file on that disk. Click OK. And hopefully it should go and configure the guest OS deployment. Okay, basically what it's doing is it's uploading the files to uh, the bin L and the FTP service. So once you configure the OS, you then need to configure a template, which is the deployment of that OS. Give it a name. The name of the uh, template must be five characters in length. Okay, identify from the drop down which OS type as configured in the OS section. Um, I've only configured Windows XP, so there's no other option available. Uh, you can put in a description. Uh, you can also bind it to a MAC address. Now what that means is that if that particular machine with that MAC address connects to the PXC server, it will automatically get the configured template and therefore guest OS uh, deployed. Um, I'm not going to bother binding it to a particular MAC address, just to show you the menu that you get where you can choose the uh, correct template. So click OK. And it should then go off and configure the template. Okay, uh, once that's been done, you will need to come in and edit the configuration. Uh, certainly for Windows machines, uh, you'll need to make sure that uh, you put in things like uh, the correct admin password, whether you want that uh, encrypted on the UDA server, um, the product ID, your name and your organization name, and the computer name. Other things that you might want to check Microsoft's uh, TechNet website for details on are things like the language group and language ID, uh, the country code for dialing settings and tapping location, and also under regional settings, uh, your keyboard input type. Uh, certainly for us here in the UK, uh, we need to change the default 
uh, keyboard from US keyboard to UK keyboard. Now just to save a bit of time I've already got those in my clipboard so I just paste them in and save that configuration and that should now be ready for the guest OS deployment so all we need to do is as I'm going to uh, do so from a virtual machine I'll create a new virtual machine let's go through the defaults for everything make sure that it's the right operating system just change the name slightly I find that the uh, default names that you get because it'll display them in a tab if they're quite long names, uh, you end up with quite a big tab at the top, so you can only actually have a number of virtual machines running and run out of space for the tabs. I've already got an empty directory that I want this virtual machine to go into. There we go. It's got one processor, so I'm going to pick the default RAM. Now, uh, my UDA appliance, uh, again, as I'm running it under VMware Workstation, is actually configured to use bridge networking so it's using my physical network card and therefore for this virtual machine to pick up uh, the PXC service it needs to also be on bridge networking. Take a default disk configuration, I'll just split mine into two gig files. Okay, now as uh, there is no guest OS already configured for this virtual machine when I power it on, it will boot off the network and hopefully pick up the PXE server. And there we go. Uh, there's the boot menu that I mentioned. Uh, the only template that I have available to me is my XP3. Um, if I had configured the uh, UDA appliance to pick up the MAC address of, in this case, the virtual machine or physical machine, then I wouldn't see the menu. It would just boot straight in. And there's the Windows setup, and it should now go through installing Windows 3 unattended. So that uh, takes us to the end of my third out of three videos on how to configure the UDA appliance. Thanks very much for watching, and hope to uh, get some more videos on other things uh, in due time.